If you got a big LG or Samsung TV for gaming, you know that they don't like you to go into the service menu to get more brightness. And even on the regular menus, they like to lock settings so you cannot get all the brightness you pay for, <laughs> for gaming. It's okay to watch the news with the peak brightness of your LG OLED, but for gaming, no, <laughs> you cannot get it. So what do we say to that? You're welcome, okay? And I'm gonna show you in this video how you can change, well, not everything, but almost everything. Okay, with this app, which is free, by the way, and it is going to work even. If you have a PS5, Xbox, PC, this works for anything you have connected to the TV through an HDMI port. And it is so easy. It's just downloaded, link in the description of the video. You have to pair the TV with your PC, and you have to change the settings of the HDMI input you want to change. So if you have a PS5 connected to your TV, you need a laptop or a desktop PC to do this, but then you can change the settings for the PS5, okay? And now we have something fantastic for LG TVs. We can disable the dimming, TPC and GSR dimming without even needing to access the service menu. So some people say, oh, I don't want to you know, go into the service menu because I don't want to be changing something that I'm not supposed to change by mistake and then messing everything up. No problem. Now I'm going to show you how I disable TPC and GSR dimming, which they are on right now. Take a look at this. TPC is on. GSR is on. I'm going to come here to this app, and I'm going to disable it without accessing the service menu. Come here to Expert, Configuration, Temporal, Pick, Luminance, TPC, Disable, and I'm gonna come here, Global Sticky Reduction, Disable, and I'm gonna show you that it worked. So I'll go to the service menu again, and you'll see. So we go here to OLED, TPC, off, GSR, off. Thank you very much, <laughs> okay? So now with this newer LG TVs, you cannot, can no longer access this real service menu without having to do a lot of things with the service remote and the code and something like that that I don't even know how to do that. But with this app, you can get here if you want. But it's not even necessary. And now the thing is, if it doesn't work, you will get a message because you might say, well, how do I know if I click there, how do I know that it actually worked without going into the service menu? Well, if it doesn't work, you get a message that's gonna tell you error. We couldn't communicate with the TV. So I'm gonna show you how you can make sure the TV is communicated with your PC, with this app, so it is actually working. So now what do you have to do? Link in the description of the video. Download this app. It is called Color Control. Very easy. It is going to be a zip file that you are going to extract, okay? And it's going to look like this. It's gonna look like this, it's a zip file. And oh, I had this thing because of the service menu. I didn't want to show the IP address. Uh, we can take it off. So you open this executable. And then here's how you have to pair the TV with the PC, okay, in this app. I would recommend you to add the TV manually, okay? So you click Add. And then you go to, on your TV, you're going to need, basically, when you click here, I don't want to click on it because, well, I can actually click it and it's not going to show any IP address or anything, okay? So when you click on it, you're going to need the IP address and the MAC address, okay? And of course, that's 
personal information. I don't want to show you that, but let me show you where it is on your TV. You go to settings on your TV, and you're gonna go to general network, your Wi-Fi, and then you're gonna click in other network, and you will see your network info. Inside the network info, you will see the IP address, which is a number, long number, and your MAC address. Just type that in. And for the name, you can just enter whatever you want. Okay? So I guess for Samsung, it's gonna be exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. If you have a Samsung TV, that's how it's gonna work. So now how do you know if this is actually uh, working? Well, let's try some settings. For example, one setting that's very easy to tell the difference is if you turn on dynamic tone mapping. So let me show you right now. Dynamic tone mapping is, is not on. And you will see the brightness difference. So right now we have HGIG, right? So I'm gonna come here to the settings. HDR dynamic tone mapping on. Boom, you see it looks brighter. So obviously, this worked, but I'll show you that it actually worked. We come here, dynamic tone mapping is on. So now dynamic tone mapping is available. We don't need to use this, but it's easy to check if it's working. But let's say, for example, you wanna try auto dynamic contrast, which is locked. Well, you, can, you can change it. I'm not sure if, if that's gonna do any, any good for you, but you just wanna try a setting that the TV has available and you've never been able to see it for gaming, you can come here, dynamic contrast, and turn it to high. And you'll see that actually worked. Come here to brightness, you see? Dynamic contrast is in high now, which I've never used, but you get the idea. There are many settings for, on SDR. This is the biggest one. If you're playing a game on SDR for some reason, you have this peak brightness locked. So basically you cannot get all the brightness you pay for on your TV. So you can use this. For example, right now it is locked. On HDR it is locked and we shouldn't change it because you're going to affect the EOTF tracking. We don't, have, we don't want to change this setting on HDR. But just to prove my point that it actually works, I can change that peak brightness right now. I can lower it to low, for example. Yeah, you saw it, the brightness difference, but I'll show you that it actually worked. We come here, see now peak brightness is in low. Okay, you can change gamma, whatever you want. Which you shouldn't, again, on HDR, we don't have to change this, but for SDR, totally. You wanna be able to change that, and for SDR, for example, you can change the color gamut. Right now, the color gamut is in auto detect, I want to change it to, to native, because I want, and let's see if I worked. Look at that, color gamut native. Now on my C1, that's all, those are the two options I have, either auto, which on HDR is BD2020, so I don't have to change this to native to get better, better color saturation or anything like that. This is just going to be more inaccurate, most likely. But if you like it, go for it. But I can actually try things that are not even available on the regular settings. So I can try, for example, this color gamut in extended. And I don't know what, what that does, okay? I'm not sure if it's just, um, look, color gamut extended. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna give it a try and see if that looks better. So that's interesting. You can get settings that are not even available um, on the regular menus. That's interesting. So you can also access the service menu by coming here to expert in start, or you can go to easy adjust if you want to calibrate. And you can also do um, stuff with the firmware, but I, I have never tried those. And we have many settings for, for gaming. This app is very good for gaming because you have a game launcher here, which allows you to add the executable of the games and have 
a specific settings for each game. So you don't have to, you know, every time you open a game, you don't have to be changing settings. So for example, if I want to use BFI in one game, I turn on BFI for that game, turn dynamic tone mapping, change this and that, change my 22 point calibration for BFI. I have that set up so I don't have to, every time I open a game, have to do a 22 point calibration to get more visibility near black. Okay, so what I do is I raise the visibility near black by increasing the RGB values. I come here to color, white balance, and then I do a 22 point calibration. I go to the lowest code value and I, I increase red, green, and blue a little bit, depends um, on the game or if I want more or less of that effect. And then I go to the next code value, 444, then three, then two, then one, then zero. Oh, you can try it more or less depending. Maybe your TV is crushing blacks and you have to do that anyway. So, but I don't want that if I am not going to use BFI and it takes a long time to change the settings, okay? So this app allows you to have a custom profile for each game. And when you open the game through here, it change, everything changes <laughs> and you don't have to do anything, okay? So that's very, very good. And again, this works for Samsung TVs too, okay? So yeah, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any issues with this app. Oh, the other thing we can do with this is to enable NVIDIA uh, detering. So to get a little bit better uh, color gradation, to reduce color banding, now, my testing, I don't see that um, making a, a big difference at all. And actually, I haven't even tried with this update. Where is that? Where are those settings? I, I don't even know with this. Uh, because I've, it's been a while since I've used this app. I've not used this game launcher at all. I like to change settings anyway. But yeah, I don't even remember where this is. They changed the position where the stuff used to be. So I don't even remember where that option is, but it's there somewhere. Uh, so yeah, this is a must, a must. It's free, easy. You don't even need to, I mean, just download, double click, open it and change whatever you want. Now, I should have said this at the beginning, but of course, do this at your own risk. These TVs have, um, especially the brightness, uh, restrictions and um, dimming to protect the TV and of course if you're playing the same game like you play WoW and you are using auto HDR or something and all the logos are very bright and that's all you play 24-7 um, yeah that might be a problem or you play Genshin Impact someone said to me the other day I got bored burning with Genshin Impact I made some videos about it and I said, I don't like this game. Actually, I'm not playing it because of the HUD elements. I like the game. What I don't like is the HUD elements and, and this number on the screen all the time that's very bright and it doesn't go away even for cutscenes. So if you're playing that game, yeah, it's a concern. So I recommend it to stretch the screen to remove that, that, um, that number from the screen to, to prevent burning and all of that. So you have to be mindful, of course. And if you're playing different games and all that, I wouldn't worry too much about uh, burning. But of course, do this at your own risk, at the risk of you know, voiding your warranty or something like that. I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, do it at your own risk. I do it myself all day long. If I, Most likely, I'm going to get a Samsung QD OLED. Before even turning on the TV, I have it set up here already. So I can go and change everything. Um, you go to the service menu, get more brightness day one. Okay, that, that TV is not even going to break in without me changing everything. Uh, but ask me, no, not, I, not everyone likes to do that, but I think it doesn't get any easier than with this app. You don't even have to access the service menu. It's just right here, bro. One, two, and three clicks. I mean, this is awesome. Absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, 
Let me know if you tried this, if you had any issues. Um, or I, I forgot to mention, here's where the HDMI inputs are. Uh, you have to change it. Right now I have the HDMI 1. I'm using the HDMI 1, but if you have the PS5 on a different HDMI input, of course you select that. Now, one thing that might happen is, for example, let's say you have the, the PS5 on the HDMI 2, for example. And you change the settings here, and nothing is changing. Here's my recommendation. Do this. You select your HDMI port where the PS5 is, okay? Then you come here, expert, and for example, let's say you're going to turn on the peak brightness on SDR, okay? So do this, change the HDMI port on the TV. So you have the mouse, so do this, you have the mouse on top of this peak brightness on high. You have it on top of it, so take it off the, off the table. You have the mouse on hand now. Now you change your, HD, your input. Your HDMI input, come here, say HDMI uh, 2, for example, here. HDMI 2, you click on it, and then you click. Then you do this. <laughs> and that's how it's going to work. So let me show you. Let me show you. If I use the HDMI 2, let's see if I have, let's see if I can open the, the settings without having anything on the HDMI 2. So if I go to the settings right now, HDMI 2, brightness is right now off, okay? Let's see if this works. Without having anything, it might not work. But let's see if it works. Right now it is off. So let's go here. Let's see if this works. So I'm, I selected HDMI 2. Go pick brightness high. Okay. Let's go here to this menu and select HDMI 2. And once we are in it, okay, once we are in it, let's go in HDMI 2. I'm going to open the settings and I'm going to click. Brightness, so it's off right now. If I click, boom, high. You see, that's how it's gonna work. So it didn't work the last time because I was not in to the HDMI 2. So you need to go in and then you have to click once you are in. That's how it's going to work for the PS5, bro. So let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.